Hello everyone. I am Mudit Saxena, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, ABES Engineering College, Ghaziabad. Today we are going to discuss the topic Full Wave Voltage Doubler. So these are the contents of my presentation. We will start with the what exactly the voltage multipliers are. Then we will see its classification. Then we will go for working of full wave voltage doubler. Now let's start with the very basic what exactly the voltage multipliers are. The voltage multiplier is one of the most important application of a PN junction diode. The voltage multiplier gives output voltage in multiples of peak value of amplitude of input voltage. It means voltage multipliers give two times, three times or more times greater than the peak value of amplitude of input voltage. Now let's come to the classification. The voltage multipliers are broadly classified into two categories, voltage doubler and voltage tripler and quadrupler. If the voltage multiplier gives twice of the peak value of amplitude of input voltage, it is known as voltage doubler. And if the voltage multiplier gives three times of the peak value of amplitude of input voltage, it is known as voltage tripler. And if the voltage multiplier gives four times of the peak value of amplitude of input voltage, it is known as voltage quadrupler. The voltage doubler is again classified into two categories, half wave voltage doubler and full wave voltage doubler. In my last video, we discussed the half wave voltage doubler. So in this video, we are going to discuss full wave voltage doubler. So this is the circuit diagram of full wave voltage doubler. So here we can see the circuit comprises of two capacitors C1 and C2 and two diodes D1 and D2. Here VI is the input voltage which is coming after passing through the secondary winding of the step down transformer. So this VI is the voltage which appears across the secondary winding of step down transformer. As we all know, the electronics deals with the low voltage application. So here, first we need to step down the input AC voltage. So this AC input voltage VI, which appears across the secondary winding of a step down transformer. So this voltage will be the input to this circuit. So this step down AC voltage will have both positive half cycle and negative half cycle. So let's start with the case number one, which corresponds to positive half cycle. So during positive half cycle, during positive half cycle, this will be plus and this will be minus. So here we need to check first which diode will be forward biased and which diode will be reverse biased. So this positive terminal of input is connected to the positive terminal of diode D1. Therefore, diode D1 will be forward biased. And because it is forward biased, it will behave like short circuit. Because this is plus sign, so here also it will be plus. And we can see this plus sign is connected to the negative terminal of diode D2. Therefore, diode D2 will be reverse biased. And because it is reverse biased, it will behave like open circuit. So this diode will behave like open circuit. And this diode will behave like short circuit. Now let's see what will be the direction of current. So the current, as we know, the current starts flowing from plus. So the current will flow in this way. It will come this path. And after reaching at this particular point, the current has two options. Either it should go in this way or in this way. Because here the diode D2 is reverse biased and because it is behaving like open circuit, so the current won't go in this path towards D2. So the current will flow and will end at this negative terminal. So this is the direction of current. So we will apply KVL in loop number 1. 
Now here, let's see what will be the polarity of capacitor C1 because when the current will flow through capacitor C1, the capacitor C1 will be charged. So because this is a positive sign, so the upper plate of the capacitor C1 will be positively charged and the lower plate of the capacitor will be negatively charged. And the capacitor will be charged with this polarity. When we will discuss negative half cycle, the polarity of this capacitor C1 re will remain the same because we know when the capacitor is charged with some polarity, then the polarity remains constant. So let's apply KVL in loop number one. One more thing here, we have assumed that the voltage across capacitor C1 is VC1. So VC1 is the voltage which appears across C1 capacitor. So I will take second sign. So this minus two plus plus Vm. So here I have written plus Vm. The current will flow in this way because this diode D1 behaves like a short circuit. So it will come towards capacitor C1. So plus two minus minus sign and the voltage across capacitor C1 is VC1 and that is equal to zero. So here we can see VC1 is equal to Vm. It means voltage across capacitor C1 is Vm. So this is the voltage across capacitor C1 during positive half cycle. Now let's come to the case number two, which corresponds to negative half cycle. So during negative half cycle, here the sign will be negative and here it will be positive. Now again, here we need to check which diode will be forward biased and which diode will be reverse biased. So because the negative terminal of input is connected to the positive terminal of diode D1, therefore diode D1 will be reverse biased and hence it will behave like open circuit. This is negative. So here also negative sign will be there and this negative sign is connected to the negative terminal of diode D2. Therefore, diode D2 will be forward biased. And because it is forward biased, it will behave like short circuit. So this diode D1 will behave like open circuit. And this diode D2 will behave like short circuit. Now again here we see the direction of current. So here the current will start flowing from plus terminal in this way. When the current will reach at this point, it has two options. Either it should go upward direction or it, uh, it should go in the downward direction. If the current goes in the upward direction and because diode D1 is behaving like open circuit, so this current won't go in the upper branch. So the current will flow flowing through, the current will flow through capacitor C2 and it will come here and it will go like this. And after reaching at this point, the current will end at this negative terminal. So this is the direction of current. Now here, we need to check what will be the polarity on capacitor C2 because this is plus sign. At this point, the polarity is positive. Therefore, the upper plate of capacitor C2 will be positively charged and the lower plate of capacitor C2 will be negatively charged. Now we need to apply KVL in loop number two. Here also, we have assumed that the voltage across capacitor C2 is VC2. VC2 is the voltage which appears across capacitor C2. So let's apply KVL in loop 2. Minus 2 plus this minus 2 plus plus Vm. So this is plus Vm. Then we will go in this way. Now here we are moving from plus to minus. So I have taken minus sign and the voltage across capacitor C2 is VC2 then the current ends here. So that is equal to zero. So VC2 comes out plus Vm. So this is the voltage across capacitor C2. That is also equal to Vm. Now we need to find the output voltage. 
so we will find the output voltage across these two points so here we are going to find the v not as we know the voltage remains constant in parallel branches so this v not will be equal to voltage across c1 plus voltage across c2 so we can write v not is equal to vc1 which is voltage across capacitor c1 and vc2 this is voltage across capacitor c2 so if we put the value of vc1 and vc2 so we know vc1 comes out vm and vc2 also comes out vm so v not is equal to twice of vm so this is the output voltage of full wave voltage doubler so here we can see the output voltage of voltage doubler is twice the peak value of amplitude of input voltage therefore we can say this circuit behaves like a voltage doubler now here also the question arises why is it so called full wave voltage doubler the answer is during positive half cycle because the v not is equal to the sum of vc1 plus vc2 during positive half cycle we calculated vc1 is equal to vm and during negative half cycle we have calculated vc2 is equal to vm so the total output voltage is equal to twice of input voltage so this twice of input voltage we have calculated during positive as well as negative half cycle that means we have used the complete cycle of the input voltage positive half cycle as well as negative half cycle therefore the name the name is full wave voltage doubler so this is all about the working of full wave voltage doubler these are the references which i have used in my presentation thank you